Hi, in this video we, we're looking really at something that's aimed at probably about grade 7 or so GCSE paper and it would be a non-calculator paper. The difficulty you've got with this particular question is quite a lot going on and firstly we need to really understand what the question is asking us to do. Okay, so let's have a look at the first bit of it and we're being told that a straight line has got an equation of that. Well actually that's not much good to us because really Really, in order to understand it, we need to have the equation in the form of y equals mx plus c because then at least we can visualise what's going on. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to rework um, this and rearrange it so that I get y as being the subject of this particular formula because then hopefully I can read it as an equation. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this minus 2y and put it over to the right hand side so I'm going to get x equals 10 plus 2y. Now I've got a positive value of y which is perfectly fine for me and I want to keep it that way but I'm going to get this 10 over again to the other side so I'm going to get x minus 10 equals 2y and then I'm going to divide through by 2. So I'm going to get y equals x minus 10 over 2. Now don't forget that really we've got x over x divided by 2 and minus 10 divided by 2. So actually I can separate those up into y equals a half x minus 5. Okay, remember x divided by 2 is the same as saying a half x. So actually now I can much clearer understand what this particular line is and it's the line y equals a half x minus 5. Okay, so the gradient is a half and it's going to go through the y-intercept of minus 5. So let's do a similar exercise when we look at the actual circle itself. Now the general equation for a circle is that this part of it is r squared. So I'm just going to have a look at that and see if I can figure out what this circle is going to look like. Well, the square root of uh, 16 is equal to 4 and the square root of 25 is equal to 5. So I guess this circle has basically got a radius of roughly about 4.5, okay, and it's going to sit on a normal axis. So we're in a situation now where we can draw pretty much what's going on here, okay. So there's my circle, a little bit squashed there, sorry about that. I've got a radius of roughly 4.5, minus 4.5 over there, okay. And then I've got this straight line that's got a gradient of a half x uh, or half and it's going to go through the y intercept of minus 5 which is going to be about here okay that's minus 5 and it's going to go through and in order for us to prove that it's a tangent it's going to touch the circle at one point it's going to have one solution at that point and what we've got to do is to prove that algebraically Okay, so a couple more things I'm going to do is I know the equation is x squared plus y squared equals 20 for the circle. I can also say by rearranging this that I can get myself a value of x. Okay, and the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to say, well, actually, if I want a value of x, rather than writing it as x minus 2y equals 10, I can write x equals 10 plus 2y. And then really it's a case of taking this value and plugging it into here. Okay, so that will allow me then to calculate the value of y and then because I've got the value of y I can calculate the value of x and then figure out this touch. Now if it gives me two solutions then it's not going to be a tangent because any other line that goes through will cross at two points, okay? So in order to prove this algebraically, I have to prove there is only one solution, and that solution is this one over here. Okay, so let's have a look at where we are with this value of x. So I know that x squared plus y squared equals 20, and I know now I've got my value of x. So what I'm going to say is that's the same then as saying 10 plus 2y squared plus y squared equals 20. And then really, I've got to expand that, 
and then solve for y. So if I expand that, I've got 10 plus 2y times 10 plus 2y. I suspect the numbers are going to be quite large here, but I think they'll all work out for us without too much of a problem. Okay, so I'm just going to work down the page here. Okay, so 10 times 10 is 100, and then I've got plus 20y, plus 20y, well that's going to be plus 40y, and then I've got 2y times 2y, well that's going to be plus 4y squared. Now don't forget that is the expansion here, but I've also got this y squared at the end here. Okay, so let's now start to tidy that up a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to get 100 plus 40y, and then I've got plus 5y squared equals 20. Well, like we did before, we really want this in the format where you've got what's called ascending order. So actually, I want my 5y squared first, then my 40y. Now, I've got 100, but I've also got equals 20 over here. So I need to bring this 20 over here to become 100 minus 20. So that's going to be plus 80, because don't forget, when you factorise this, it needs to be equal to zero. When you get the solutions, it's got to be equal to zero. OK, so I've got these uh, coefficients, 5, 40 and 80. It'd be kind of remiss of me not to divide through by 5, just to make my life a little bit easier. So I can actually write this very same equation as y squared plus 8y plus 16 equals zero. OK, and then it's a case of factorising that. Now, you might recognise that actually I can factorise that as y plus 4 times y plus 4 equals 0. So in other words, what we're saying is, is that there is only one value of y. And that is, if y plus 4 equals 0, then y must equal minus 4. OK, so because of this, we're saying there is only one value of y. So kind of so far, so good. And we're saying is actually, if we go back to our circle, it's only just above this four, this four and a half point, And it's actually going to be minus four. OK, hopefully you can see that. Not a fantastic um, diagram, I'm afraid, but hopefully it will give you some idea. OK, so. Because there's only one value of minus 4 for y, we can just use that and we can work out the value of x. And don't forget, we said that x equals 10 plus 2y. So therefore, I can say that x must equal 10 plus 2 times minus 4. So that means x will equal 2. OK, so I've got y equals minus 4 and x equals 2. So this point here is going to be the point 2 minus 4. In other words, there is one solution where x equals 2 and y equals minus 4. And that's it. So really what we needed to do is we needed to understand what was being asked first. OK, take our time to kind of I, I think it's sometimes easier to create a little sketch so you can see things for yourself. Know that we can just rearrange that to get um, the, the equation of the line itself, which is y equals a half x minus 5, and that's in a much more common form. And then we can use also this equation to figure out a value of x and then plug it straight in. And when we've plugged it straight in, we should find that actually it solves relatively easily in these sorts of questions. I think sometimes the difficulty is in understanding the question rather than actually getting through to solve it. OK, hope that's been useful. Please do add a comment below if you're not sure about anything. Have a look at the, uh, uh, the other uh, videos on the site and I look forward to seeing you inside the next video.